What's up, folks? David Soto Jr. here, and this is the David Soto Jr. Podcast. What's up, folks? Welcome to episode 57 of the David Soto Jr. Podcast. I am your host, David Soto Jr. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. It's early on a Sunday morning. Everybody still asleep. It's the only time I can get stuff done. Today I'm going to talk about something that's been blowing my mind. Um, and it is uh, the Hubble Deep Space uh, image. Let me see. So, I first saw this image uh, about 2015, sitting at a bar by myself, which I did often, drinking, and it showed up on my Twitter feed or something, and I was just blown away that this tiny picture, tiny, tiny, tiny square of the random universe um what it contained and it just blew my mind i couldn't really wrap my head around it but i was like wow um i kind of haven't thought about that picture in a few years but hubble telescope deep field Um, it came up in a conversation when I was talking to you know who um, and it kind of came back to mine and my mind and uh, uh, it came, so it came back to my mind I'm talking about it and I Was uh, oh was again blown away thinking about it again, and then Mike Rowe has a new show on Discovery Channel, and he uh, was doing an episode about how the origin of the of that picture, that very picture, the deep Hubble deep field. So, I want to talk about it. Just drop some facts that I've been looking into. And then see if it will blow your mind. If you're on YouTube, I might be able to uh, edit in a picture of it. But if you just Google Hubble Deep Field, um, you'll see what I'm talking about. So before I, uh, before we get to, um, well, I don't know what what this means. I was I was gonna say before we get to what this means. Um, I'm going to drop some facts. So we have to understand how small the earth is. Um, it just blows my mind. I tried to, uh, so the earth, when Mars, okay, so let's get things into perspective. When Mars is at its closest to the earth. Right, because they have different, um, different orbits, and they orbit around the sun. So sometimes they're just crazy. But there's at one point every two years where they're lined up, um, and they're at its closest. And even when Mars is at its closest, it is thirty-five million miles away. 35 million miles away. That's when it's at its closest. If we were to drive or fly a, a spaceship directly to Mars, when it's at its closest, I think we could get there in 40 days. Um, what's messed up <laughs> is that everything is moving. So even when it's at its closest, it's only there for a short period of time. So if we were to take off and head that way, 
it would already be it would be moving it would move away so we'd have to chase it so the actual time because i was trying to figure out trying to put some things in perspective i'm trying to go well, how far is mars well i'll figure out how far mars is by figuring out how far how long it takes to get there it takes six to eight months to get there on a goddamn rocket it takes six to eight months to get there um but then i found out because uh the way it's moving that we'd have to follow it you have to go into our orbit and then when it gets close to when we get close to mars's orbit we do some burn some fuel and get into their orbit and then follow them and then catch up to them and in order to do that it would take six to eight months longer if we make a pit stop at the at the space station up there so but everything everything's moving everything is moving like we're moving um, not only are we rotating every 24 hours, we are s we are a revolution, rotation, rotate, revolution. I don't know. Not only are we spinning, but we're circling around the sun. And, and so, not only is that the uh, not only are are we as an Earth, so are the rest of us. I'm blabbering, um, but it's just amazing when you look into this stuff and you, and, and, and you, the more that you don't know, you realize the more that you don't know, um, I don't know if my Instagram live feed is working or not. Okay. Let me get back to it. I'm sorry. 35 million miles away. So if you uh, realize that the circumference of the Earth is just under 25 million miles, all right, it's just under 25 million miles, that means it would take, in order to equal 1 million miles, you would have to take 40 trips around the world. 40 trips around the world to equal 1 million miles. Have you ever gone on a hike? Have you ever gone on a long drive? Have you driven across the country? And realize how long it takes to get from one place to another. Um, drive to uh, from Missouri. You drive through Kansas. Have you ever driven through Kansas? Because it sucks and it's long and it's boring and it's no fun and it's the worst thing ever. Can you imagine? And and how many miles is that? Six hundred miles. Can you imagine traveling across the world? How long it would it take? To travel around the world i'm sorry and then you'd have to do it 40 times to reach 1 million and then mars is 35 million miles away when it's at its closest point to the earth so we have to understand how far away mars is and mars is our next closest uh planet right pretty sure i'm pretty sure what about the other planets? How far away are those? We can look them up. You can Google that. But they're um, so far away that you, I don't know, traveling to them would not be based on our technology, right? Or you know, based on science, right? Is not possible. Um... How long would it take? And in, in the movies, you have to go to sleep and you, you'll travel. And by the time you get there, you wake up. I don't know. It's that's science fiction, not real science. My whole point of all this is to <clears throat> make you understand. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm not trying to make you understand nothing. I'm trying to make me understand. Make me understand how big our solar system is. I have traveled into the woods and walked for a couple days and haven't traveled more than like 14 miles. And by the t time I get, there's, there's nothing around. I can walk for a couple days and there will be 
nobody around, nothing, no signs, just wildlife and, and, and quiet and no cars. It's a bird and I'm recording a podcast. Sorry. No cars, no lights, no buildings, no people. There's so much untouched earth, so much that people haven't seen the earth itself. And I'm just talking about in one country, in one state, whether it's Arizona or, 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 or Colorado. You go up into the mountains, you can get lost and you'll be surrounded by nothing. And you're not even that far in. You're just a couple miles in. So to think about how far you can travel just on this earth, just in the United States, not to mention the, the rest of the earth, other countries. Um, the world, the, 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 the United States is a big country. Uh, America is a big continent. The, the world is big. It's huge. And to travel from one end to the other just takes so much time. Unbelievable amount of time. And then we're talking about traveling to Mars and Mars at, in a rocket ship. It will take us eight months. Do you know how much ground that will cover? 35 million plus miles. Again, in order to equal 1 million miles, we'd have to travel around the world 40 times to, to equal 1 million miles. Mars is 35 million miles away. How far is Uranus? <laughs> I don't know. If I'm, I don't know. Uh, okay. I think I may be boring some people, but I got to tell you that my whole point is to say how big our solar system is. The Sun, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, blah, 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 Saturn, Jupiter, all of that stuff, it's huge. And as far as humans, as far as we've gone, is our moon, which I don't know how far away it is. I, I didn't look that up. Um, but it takes two seconds. It takes two seconds for light to travel from the moon to the Earth. 2.5 seconds or something. Uh, that's that's also something to consider when we're when we're thinking about how far it take it would take 20 seconds for light to travel from Mars. So if we're going to communicate with this, with uh, uh, radio or whatever, however we communicate, it would take to be a 20 second delay. That's how long. Like I, this signal on Instagram Live, or once I post this on on, that is going to take a fraction of a second to travel to get into your ears, or if, when you watch it, it's going. It's almost instantly. If you're watching, it's almost instantly. Now, for the light from your your phone or from your computer, it's traveling so fast that. You don't see a delay in my lips, right? Compared to sound. But if we go to the moon, it takes there's a two-second delay. If we're at Mars trying to communicate, it's a 20-second delay. The speed of light is very, very fast. Uh, okay. Now, what does this have to do with the Hubble Deep Field uh, photo? I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I promise. And I am going to take too long. Already I'm 14 minutes. I'm babbling. I'm trying to make my point. The solar system is huge. Humans have never traveled past the moon. Maybe we'll go to Mars. Thanks to Elon. But we have to realize how big the solar system is. Because... Our solar system is in a galaxy. That galaxy is the Milky Way. I don't know if you've ever been out. Like I told you, when I go out uh, in the woods and these hikes and camping, um, 
be able to see the Milky Way is mind-blowing itself. Um, we are just <laughs> a, a spot of dust in the Milky Way. The Milky Way itself, uh, I don't know the size of it. I'm just getting into some complicated stuff, but there has been, there's estimated a over at least last count was over 500 solar systems in the Milky Way 500 solar systems now I just spent 15 minutes almost trying to express how large our solar system is um, and then think about it that, that there are over 500 in our galaxy the Milky Way 500 solar systems it's unfathomable about the size of the Milky Way. How big is this thing? It's measured in light years. Don't ask me. I don't know. I'm not that smart. So, the Milky Way is our galaxy. In our galaxy, there are over 500 solar systems. Our solar system has, uh, what is it? Nine planets? Eight planets? Whatever. It's we, We've only been able to send mechanical equipment out um, and it's taken years to get out. We, we we haven't reached the end of our solar system because it takes years of travel, decades of travel. And in our galaxy are 500 or other solar systems, over 500 other systems. That means there's a sun and there's planets circling that sun and it's so big that it's un it's it can't be traveled to they have there is their own social could there be another planet i mean this isn't about life on other planets which everybody wants to go to when i don't i talk when i bring the subject up i don't want to talk about that because it's really silly to th to think that just this little speck is the only source of life intelligent life anyways um, 500 solar systems I have a point I'm trying to get to it I'm sorry but if you look at this Hubble deep field photograph you will see what looks like a bunch of stars and if you look closer if you if you zoom in or get look at it on your monitor or, or a little bit bigger you will see that those aren't stars those are galaxies like our Milky Way that contains over 500 of them there is I don't know a thousand galaxies in this picture if you look close you can see one or two that look like a galaxy you look like the milky way like it has the spinning stars and planets and solar systems uh, you can't imagine how big our, our, our solar system is much less there's 500 of them in our galaxy and then in this picture there's thousands of galaxies And this picture was taken, pointed at a dark, darkest spot out in space. And the guy who wanted to point this Hubble telescope at that was kind of laughed at because there's nothing there. Why do you want to take a picture of nothing? And he fought for it, got his way, took a picture, opened up that lens, if you know how a camera works, let in as much light as he could for 100 hours. I believe it's 100 hours. When they got the picture back, it was this. Thousands upon thousands of galaxies. And this is mind blowing. First of all, the biggest thing is that, or two things I, that makes me think about is, there is no heaven. <laughs> all right. There, it, how far else farther out do we need to see that than to realize that there is no heaven and the people who came up with this idea of heaven did not have this information right 
all they had was what they could see above them, which was our atmosphere, Earth, which in reality is a tiny, tiny, tiny speck of dust, microscopic in the sense of are the entire observable universe. Something I learned yesterday. That's only the universe that we can see. Who knows how much is out there? It's endless. It's infinite. I don't, and it's kind of beyond my comprehension. Because if you get a chance, watch a YouTube video. There's a bunch of them where, where it talks about the size of the universe. And they will do like a comparison. And like, okay, well, this is a human being. This is how big a dinosaur was. This is how big the earth is. This is how, and then it'll just keep going and going and going. And it, it, will, it will be to scale. And so eventually the earth will be so small. Just in getting to a star or a, a distant planet, not to mention outside uh, of our galaxy, um, but just getting to a different uh, a, a star in our galaxy. The, the, I mean, Jupiter itself is in our solar system and it dwarfs our... So, my point is that this is mind blowing my mind. Is there a heaven? Uh, is it a physical place? I don't know. Uh, obviously not. There is no place to go to when you die. You don't ascend up into the clouds. The people who came up with heaven as being up above us in the sky, this is all the information that they had. All they could see was our atmosphere, um, our clouds, right? White, fluffy clouds. And they envisioned God as a man up there with a white beard. Um, and they didn't have enough information. And so that makes me think like, okay, well, they're wrong. It's like the same as people who thought the earth was flat and that you would, although we have some people now that, that are dumb and think that now. Um, but people thought the earth was flat they didn't know they didn't have the information they thought you could sail off the edge of the of the world and and, and uh float off into the universe they didn't have the information and so they believed that the earth was flat and so they were wrong can people be wrong who wrote sacred doctrines, books, literature, constitutions, can they be wrong? Not because they were dummies, but because they had didn't have the technology to get them more information. And so for people to look and think that these sacred doctrines or literature or let me just say old books, these old people who wrote these old ass books think that that applies to the world we live in now. Um, it's ridiculous. We have more information. There definitely is not a hell. Where would it be? Again, the people who came up with the concept of hell n knew that uh, it would had it. Uh, the impression that it was below. If heaven was above us in the clouds, then hell would be below. Obviously, they're referring to the heat and how hot it is because of the planet's core and lava and shit. Like, they weren't that dumb. They knew that lava came out of the ground. They knew that it was hot. That's where hell is, is in the ground. Um... Uh, but there's no, no, there's nothing down there. It's the hot molten lava. It's the core of the earth. Um, the other thing that this makes me realize is how unimportant everything is. Like, what's important? What am I? You ever step on an ant? You ever kill a bug? Like, what is that bug's life worth? What does it matter? What is it? nothing you stomp on it you take it it's done it's out of existence 
and why do we think this is okay? Like, okay, it is okay. It is okay. You're going to kill a bug, you want to kill a spider. Um, but we find this, we do this because they are so small. Because they are so small, we don't think anything of it. And if we as human beings were, were looked upon by something bigger than us, which, let's say, the universe, why would it think about us? You see a gnat walking by, you swat at it, you try to kill it, you try to grab it, you want because to... It, because it's so small, you don't think twice about it. Then that applies to us. We are so small. What do we matter? What matters? So, <clears throat> this doesn't make me get all like, why am I alive? What is life? Blah, blah, blah. It makes me realize to appreciate what I have and to prioritize and to realize that nothing matters except my happiness and my family and the things I want to do and the things I want to, to not to have in a sense, yes, but like I, I have this family and I have this beautiful wife and I have this beautiful babies and I love it and uh, I want to enjoy this then this is all that matters to me and getting enjoyment out of this um, the, the the things that I enjoy the <clears throat> I say if I say enjoy one more time getting the pleasure out of the things that I enjoy is all that I can do is all that I, because what else is there? What else is important? What else matters in the scheme of thing? Nothing. Who cares? When I'm going to go to heaven? There's no heaven. Is somebody going to judge me? Somebody, it doesn't matter. All that matters is, is me and what I want. And what I want is to have is um, well I have it I have what I want it's a beautiful wife it's a beautiful family it's food so that we can sustain ourselves it's water food water shelter we have everything that we need everything that I need I have to uh, enjoy this short 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 amount of time that we have as human beings could we come back that's a possibility right um if there's no physical place where is heaven could it be just a state right we think about buddhism something that i've been um really uh into something that made sense when i start when i started looking into it and learning of, about it uh actually i've studied a lot of religions and there's a little bit of truth in everything. Um, some people don't see that. But if we take a little bit from here and there, there's some truth in it. There's some truth in it. And we could take things from it. And, and, and we don't have to follow these rules like, and make decisions. Like, oh, it's either this or this. We're going to be Jewish or we're going to be uh, Christians. We're going to be evangelical because we can't be Catholic Christians. Uh, but we got to be evangelical Christians. This is a set of rules that we need to follow in order to get into heaven. Look at this picture. This is a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of the galaxy. Uh, no, of uh, the universe. A small square. Go outside at night. Find a small square. Go like this and realize that this... I don't even know if this is accurate, but this little, make the OK symbol and realize that that is the Hubble Deep Field picture. And in that little circle in your OK symbol 
is thousands and thousands and thousands of galaxy galaxies folks i am uh, i i know i uh, i spend a lot of time umming and and stuff in this I got to get back into my broadcasting, so I'm just, it's been, been over a year, I'm back into it, I'm doing the best I can, I'm trying to, but this, this topic that I can, I don't know uh, enough, I don't know, I, I'm having a hard time expressing, I'm having a hard time comprehending, do yourself a favor, I don't even know if it's a favor, but go look, look up Hubble Deep Field and um, look at this picture and realize that you are really nothing. <laughs> uh, okay, folks, you can find me on Instagram, unless you're watching this on Instagram and your family, at David E. Soto Jr. Instagram, Twitter, uh, Instagram used to be me uh, traveling the country and taking pictures of beautiful scenery and uh, uh, fish and fishing and woods and all kinds of stuff. But now just basically pictures of my kids because that's where I, that's the point. That's where I am in my life. Uh, Twitter, I don't know. I try to interact more, blah, blah, blah. I'm doing the best I can. Uh, Amazon.com. Uh, look for me, David E. Soto or David Soto Jr. David E. Soto Jr. Google me, David Soto Jr. Um, I got some books out there. I uh, I have kids to send to college, so if you want to support me, you can buy my books, and I think they're good. So it's actually you're not just giving me nine ninety nine. You're actually buying a uh, uh, trading money for a fun story. So if you look at, uh, go find Los Chocolates de Esperanza Diamante. Why did I title it in Spanish? I don't know, because it really chases off or pushes off a, lo a lot of people um, who think that I, it's in Spanish. And it's dumb. It's dumb that I did that. But a lot of people, um, I don't know, maybe it's attracting the audience it needs. Anyways, find me on Twitter, find me on Instagram, at David E. Soto Jr., uh, Check me out on, well, that's it. Check me out on, on YouTube. And then um, I will, I'm going to keep this up. I'm going to keep this up. Every Sunday I'm going to record something, okay? So I appreciate it, folks. Thanks for tuning in.